What's going on, everybody? Thursday, my peeps. What's going on, Lita Tucker, Debbie, Dennis, Steph, L. Grant, Richard? Welcome into the homemade kitchen. How is everyone? Give me some updates. I see some pizza already. I like. I, I'm down for some pizza. I love that. How the heck are you? Throw it in the chat. We'd love to know where in the world you are, whether it's in our country, in a different country. Where are you beaming in from? But welcome to Homemade. I am Joel Gamron. I'm the head chef and founder here. And uh, I'm going to say seafood obsessor, aficionado. Um, I grew up in Seattle, so fish and seafood have been on my table forever, my whole life, as long as I can remember. It's on my table now at least three times a week, and so, so excited to tackle swordfish with you guys today. This recipe is killer, and it's with our amazing partner. We love them so much. It's the Fulton Fish Market. They've been around for 200 plus years, so we're going to talk about them, but I know people are just coming in, so kind of get settled. We're waiting for a lot of people. We've had uh, over 2,000 people signed up for this class, which is not surprising because, you know, steak a poivre, which is a black pepper French steak with frites, it's delicious. Let's be real. But swordfish steak a poivre, very new, very different, much healthier, a really cool rendition. So we knew this would be a popular one. Where are people coming in from all over? I'm just curious. We've got people who are in Seattle. Someone from Seattle. Yes. Port Angeles. Nice. And then we've got other states like Florida. Nice. Uh, Iowa, Oregon, Ugh. Maryland. So no matter what state you are, because a lot of people say, well, yeah, of course you have seafood that's super fresh on your table. You live in Seattle, dude. Well, let me tell you, it doesn't matter where you live, okay? Fulton Seafood Market, no joke, overnight shipping to every domestic, you know, landlocked state here. So not including Alaska or Hawaii. So for those of my friends in Iowa or if you're down in Nebraska or anywhere in this country, if you want the freshest, best seafood, we're going to talk about it. But Fulton is the way to go. Uh, a couple of housekeeping rules real quick. Um, you can chat with me in real time. That's what this is all about. You just have to show your face like my good buddies who are already doing them. Miriam and uh, Kat, and I see some other people. Kara, hi Kara. Um, so as long as you show your beautiful face, even if you're not cooking along, you can ask me a question. If that's not your thing, we totally understand. Kat is in the chat. She's another chef. Kat, say what's up. What's up? What's up, girl? <laughs> That's amazing. She's from Hawaii uh, originally, so she knows her seafood inside and out too. Did you have it like pretty much every night? Not every night, but it was pretty often. Yeah, like four times a week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just like that's just say, when you live on the coast, you should be eating fish four or five days. So it's much poke. So good for you. Yeah. Did you say so much poke? Really? I Lunch? Yes. Breakfast? Poke bowls for, if it's breakfast, usually it's leftover poke that I, <laughs> that I cook on the stove. Oh. I just like fry it up on the stove and you just really? eat it with rice. It's really a good. A little cracked egg? Yeah. I would do a little ahi with cracked egg. Yeah. Anyways, uh, guys, let's dive in. This recipe, no joke, uh, kind of seems fancy because it's got a fancy name. Steak a poivre, right? Swordfish a poivre. Um, but again, it's a black pepper sauce, so easy to make. It's kind of one pan. We're doing some frites with it. You don't need to. Steam some broccoli, make some couscous, whatever you want. It's all about the swordfish. You guys have to see the quality of this, by the way. We live in Seattle. Fulton is in New York. Look at the glossy, opaque, almost just, cr I mean, it's so beautiful, the color. This blushing pink, and then you see this bright, bloodline no joke when you see a bright bloodline like that like it is that rich in color it's almost like it got plucked out of the ocean like cat and i were talking about it i mean i have a lot of swordfish stories we're going to talk about it but when you find swordfish this fresh you can honestly just slice it and eat it raw it's that delicious so that just speaks to the quality of fulton again 
if you like really want to up your seafood game, it starts with the seafood, the ingredient. You can't take mediocre seafood and make it awesome. So for Fulton, this is huge. I'm going to say this a million times today because it's the most ridiculous offer. If you have not tried them yet, if this is the first time you're hearing about them, we're going to put their link in the chat. $50 off your first order. $50 goes towards it, okay? You're going to get an email on Saturday. That expires first thing Monday. So you have about 24 hours when you get that email. Write it down on a post-it, stick it on your forehead, write it on your mirror, get a tattoo. I don't care. On Saturday, you're getting an email from Fulton. If you want $50 worth of seafood to you, you're going to want to take advantage of that. If you're already a buyer, which I know so many of our homemaders are because we're all obsessed with them, um, you continue to get that loyalty point. So 1,000 points towards your first order, 2,000 extra points on your second order. Again, I'll keep reminding you, but let's get cooking. So first thing we're going to do is do these frites. We're just going to knock them out, get them out of the way. Um, there's so many interesting ways to do French fries. Potatoes, I mean, it's like the most versatile vegetable in the world. We're going to do shoestring fries. Any shoestring lovers out there? I love them. I love shoe. They're, they feel like you're not even eating French fries. It feels like air. It doesn't feel bad for you. You know, it's still French fry, but it's just so small and teeny. So um, we're starting with an Idaho russet potato, just like this, just a normal one. We gave it a good scrub, um, and the goal is we really want to get it as thinly sliced as possible. There's a couple of ways to do this, but before we get into that, I do want to mention we've got some neutral oil. So this can be peanut oil, canola oil, oils that don't have a lot of flavor, right? Neutral means neutral in flavor. So I have this at about 350 degrees, 375 degrees, and it's just getting hot. So if you're cooking along, grab some oil. I put it in a nice deep pot about halfway up, about 350 degrees. Easy. I'm going to take this potato and I'm going to just start with a peeler. This is just one way to do it. Peeling back the potato. I'm not going to peel the potato. Peel this into strips. See what I'm doing here? You can do this with a mandolin too. Or if you're really good with a knife, rock it out. But you get these really nice paper thin strips of potato and then you just kind of stack them like cards like this and then you just run your knife through them until you have these really nice little shoestrings aren't those cute really really simple okay so you can use the peeler again a mandolin actually already has the attachment so it will kind of julienne or cut them really thin like this for you if you can do this by hand here's what it would look like slice that down as thin as you can into a little sheet and cut that up so that works too the goal is just get it as thin as you possibly can okay now this next step is huge if you're cooking along and you take some of those potatoes and you just put them in your hand and rub them around and then you drop them you can feel on your hand there's like a like a film or like a substance and that's potato starch and the starch well that really makes the potatoes not get as crispy as we want so we kind of want to wash away the starch so we have a bowl of cold water and i already did some here so you didn't have to sit and watch me Peel potatoes all day, although I know that's riveting TV. And you can see I'm just putting the potato shreds into this water. It almost looks like rice noodles. You don't need to soak it for long, but you just kind of scrub it, rough it up a little bit until the, the water turns kind of pale. See how it's doing that? That's all the potato starch. All right. And then what I like to do is just grab these potatoes. Let's start with a handful here. And I'm going to put them on a tray that has paper towels on it. And just kind of spread them out. You can put this in a salad spinner too. And then I'm just going to start blotting these dry. I used to, no joke, this used to be my job. I'm not going to say which restaurant, but it's a very fancy restaurant that a lot of people know. And my job was the, no joke, the potato blotter. And like my friend's like, yeah, I just started this new job at a bank or 
yeah, you know, I'm like this really cool lawyer, and I'm like, that's great, I dry potatoes. Like, that's <laughs> part, <laughs> cat's laughing. Well, that's part of being a young chef, is you got, you know, you got to start with the, these little, little jobs. But the key is, is you really want to spend a little extra time and make sure as much of that water is off as possible. Cool. So then we've got these nice, dry, almost starch-free potatoes. We've got our warm oil at 350, and you just want to kind of put them in there. Look at that. How cool is that? Now, when you're frying potatoes, always, this goes for tater tots, whole potatoes, french fries, or shoestrings like this, the key, the absolute key is the bubbles. The bubbles tell you. They're talking to you. And they're going to actually let you know when your frites are ready to go. So, Luke, can we go to a top down one more time? Hard to see because we're steaming so much, but there's so much steam and the bubbles are so loud and they're so big because there's so much water still in the potatoes. Even though we dried a lot of it, there's still going to be a lot of water left on it. So the bigger the bubbles, the less crispy they're going to be. The louder it is, the less crispy it's going to be. You want it silent with baby bubbles. That means there's almost no water left in these potatoes. And so there's not vigorous bubbles and it's not hissing if that makes sense. The oil will tell you. This is your number one marker. I want to pause there. Any questions, Kat? What are we seeing in the chat? Not much right now. Yeah? But I agree. You can, <laughs> you can look at what you're frying and tell like yes. when it's ready to come out. Yes. Just by the bubbles. It's all about the bubbles. Okay, this goes for fish and chips, anything. Now, this tool, if you don't have it for frying, is crucial. This is called a spider. Luke said he has tons of spiders in his house. He's laughing. Luke's our uh, head of production. He's amazing. Um, but this is a different type of spider, obviously. This is really nice for pasta, straining out things from stock, but really good for dealing with fried stuff. So I like to get in there and kind of move around my potatoes. You can see they're already starting to brown, but they're not there yet. I can still hear and see big bubbles. So even though they're turning golden brown, you just want to wait that extra second to let them get a little darker, but they're getting there. So while those are going, I got a couple more ingredients that really take these shoestrings up a little notch. This is optional but we're getting a little French here today. A little truffle oil. Okay, do you need it? No. Is it delicious? Yeah, it's amazing. And swordfish can actually hold up to it because it's so meaty and rich. So we've got a little truffle oil. I've got a little Parmesan and some black pepper. Also, just for funsies, a little bit of parsley. So I'm gonna grab some parsley, tear it off the stem, chop this up nice and fine. Usually I don't chop parsley more than a couple times through, but this is honestly more for color than flavor. So we're just gonna chop this really fine. I put my hand down on the board, chop it as fine as you possibly can. This looks great. And then once those bubbles stop and it's silent, you guys can kind of see no more bubbles, no more steam. They're just kind of sitting there they're done. And I've gotten some fried ahead of time. Again, so you didn't have to watch me keep frying. But you take these out and you add them to their little shoestring potato family. Look how beautiful these look. And while they're still hot, while there's still a little oil over it, hit it with the Parmesan. Hit it with all that herb. Again, just for color. How beautiful that looks. Lots of black pepper and then a ton of salt. And then don't forget, a little bit of that je ne sais quoi, je ne sais quoi, teaspoon, just a splash of the truffle oil. And you can kind of toss that through. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Let me just kind of hold that up so you guys can see. 
Wow. How fun are those? So easy. No special equipment. Nothing. And you could, I mean, that looks like steakhouse frites. See if you guys can just hear the crunch. I mean, could charge 40 bucks for just these potatoes. Unbelievable. Can we do a little side view? Look at those. That's a show shoestring fry done to perfection. I love the little cheese on there too. That's really nice. So these can be pushed to the side. All right. When you have frites that are so thin and crispy, it's kind of like a potato chip. They can kind of just sit there and they're going to stay crispy. When you have a lot of meat in the potato left, that's when they get a little soggy. So you can make these ahead of time. You can keep them warm in the oven if you want it, like 200 degrees. But the reality is that they'll just hang out and they'll be great. I know that's kind of a new recipe for people, so I want to pause as always. Any thoughts, questions, concerns there? Um, not really. Just if you did it in an air fryer, I think really, oh. how would you go about it? Huh. I would do the exact same thing in an air fryer. I'd load them up and get them going. I think it would Just work great. Just give them a little coat of oil and you're good. I was going to say the exact Just same thing. Just a really light coat of oil. Even if it was a spray of canola oil. Like it doesn't have to be a lot, but just something to help them kind of brown. That's a good call, Kat. All right. Let's get to the main event, shall we? Frites are beautiful, but swordfish is more beautiful. So, swordfish. Oh, my gosh. This is, you know, I have a lot of friends who hate fish. They just don't eat it that much. They don't know how to cook it. They get nervous about cooking it. And I always say swordfish is like the gateway fish. It's like the fish that gets you obsessed with cooking fish. It really does. Why? Texture mainly. It's really meaty. It's like literally you can slice it like a steak. It's got chew. It's got bite. It's got just, it's like, it's meaty. I mean, that's the best thing you could say. So when you're choosing swordfish, you know, you do want to look for this bloodline. And, you know, when I lived in Italy and I'd go to the seafood markets, this is what they would measure seafood by, which is uh, swordfish by, which is how bright is the bloodline. And it needs to look like fresh blood, right? Not blood that's been dried, but like fresh, bright blood. And I know that's like, oh, why is Joel talking about blood? Guys, we're talking about some, you know, a fish. So if you want the freshest... You need to have that. And this is why Fulton is such a big deal. This is why we work with Fulton Seafood. You know, they're 200 years old. I always tell this, but restaurants don't necessarily pick out their own seafood. They trust seafood mongers, right, who are basically seafood curators to choose the freshest stuff for these restaurants. Fulton has been doing that their whole career. The best restaurants in New York City use Fulton, still to this day. It's just recently that they opened up to people like us at home. And they do the exact same thing. They cherry pick, they look for the best seafood that they have, the best lobsters, the best shrimp, the best scallops, the best whatever. And they find them for you and they ship them to you again overnight. So this is why we love them. It's the quality. When you have a company that's been around for over 200 years, which I don't think we have another partner in our entire slate, or I even know that many food companies that's been around that long, you just know that they're doing something right. And how wrong can seafood get? Very wrong, right? It could be, you know, we've all seen bad seafood. So they do it precise, consistent, and like I said, top notch. So for this recipe, for this kind of black pepper version, I want you guys to get a nonstick pan on a medium high heat. So a medium high heat would be if, 10 is cranked all the way high, one is all the way low, I'd be at like a seven. Cool. And I'm gonna start with some olive oil in that pan. A couple of tablespoons. Cool. Now to my swordfish, I wanna crust this with black pepper and salt. Crust it. I, I almost don't wanna see the fish. It's gonna build this outer crust that is unreal. So I already have some black pepper that's ground, but you can totally just take it from a pepper mill. And I'm going to sprinkle it from up high so it really evenly distributes over this fish. 
We've got a question from Debbie here. Yeah. Hey, Debbie. Here we are. Hey there. How are you? Good. How are you? Doing okay. So from this angle here, looking at the fish, yeah. the two on your left look twice as big. The two on my These guys? Yeah. left there, yeah. They look twice as fat, thick as the other two. Is that yeah. just the camera? They're a little fatter. They're probably from a different side of the tail. Like this, it probably, you know, how the, the tail kind of goes down and thinner and thinner and thinner. It's probably just that. And that's really normal with any fish, whether you're ahi or salmon or halibut. You might get a thicker or thinner piece, and that's actually not that big of a deal because some people like it more cooked through and other people like it, you know, more middle. So you just got to kind of gauge. So how, do, how does the cooking time change? Not how do you huge. Gauge the, it. Yeah, not that huge. If I hold this up sideways, if we can, so you can kind of see thicknesses here. So these look about half the size thickness of these. So they'll right. probably cook in about, I don't know, I'd shave like a minute or two off the side of the okay. thin ones. Yeah, nothing crazy. And we'll gauge it here, we'll do it together. That's a great call out. Yeah, All I right. think, you know, listen, like anything, I mean, no two chickens are the same, no two pieces of pork are the same, like unless it's factory made. And so when you're getting the real stuff, it's gonna come to you in its natural form and it's not always going to be perfect, and I think that's part of cooking. It's just kind of gauging that, and so we'll do that today. We'll kind of sense that together. You guys, I'm, I'm just crusting the other side. Lots of salt, lots of black pepper. Again, I almost don't want to see the flesh of the swordfish. I know that seems like a lot of black pepper, but that is the recipe. Let me just hold this up so you guys can see. You see how much black pepper is on there. It's literally a crust. Cool. So whenever I, I, I cook anything in a pan like fish, it's going to cook within, you know, five minutes. These are going to take about three minutes on the first side, two minutes on the second side. We'll talk about why. The thin one's probably about two minutes on the first side, one minute on the second side. So here we go. I'm going to start with the thin ones starting at 12 o'clock. And I'm going around the clock just so I remember which fish I put in first, so I know which ones to turn first. Now I'm gonna turn up the heat just a little bit. Once they're in, you can, you know, the temperature of the oil drops, of the whole pan drops. So you kinda wanna bring it back up. So why the first side takes so little time? Well, or so much more time. So that first side, ooh, there's the black pepper. I knew I was gonna inhale it, and I was gonna cough everywhere. It's gonna happen. Um, so the first side always takes a little longer than the second side because again, the pan just kind of drops in temperature. It's not really true for the grill. The grill's so hot that when the fish hits, the grill kind of maintains its temperature. But in a pan like this, it, the pan just needs a minute to kind of come back up to temp. Now, as the swordfish is cooking, what I love about swordfish is it kind of tells you when it's done. It's got like a built-in thermometer. And so, uh, Luke, can we go to a top-down real quick? I'm gonna pick this up. Normally I wouldn't touch this, but I just wanna show you guys. If I put it on its side, do you guys see how the white is just crawling up the side of the fish? That's what I love about swordfish. It just tells you. So when that white gets about halfway up the side of the fish, you know it's time to flip. So you'll see a lot of cooks kind of crouching down, looking for that white, and that really tells you what's going on. Now these thinner fillets, oh, they're so beautiful. These are gonna probably be ready to flip in about 30 seconds here, okay, really, really fast. These thicker ones, probably another minute or so longer. And again, that's just something you gotta gauge and kind of know. So here we go. Take a look at these top ones. The way to flip it, I love these fish spatulas. They're bendy like this. So they get underneath the fish and they kind of cradle it and they don't tear into it. So I kind of hold it like a pencil like this and I sneak it underneath. I put my finger on the flesh that's not cooked and I flip it away from me. And you have this beautiful black pepper crust. Look at that. I'm going to give these thicker ones just a little extra time. 
It smells amazing already. I know. Dude, Swordfish has this sweet flavor that is just crazy. If you've never tried it, again, you've got that discount code coming to you Saturday. If you're a first-time user, if you're a second-time or a third-time user, you're getting the loyalty points. It's just worth it. Swordfish also just screams summer to me. Like, it's so good for the grill. Everyone loves it. It's got the texture that kids even dig. It's so good. All right, let's flip these biggie guys. So same thing. Fingers on the cold underneath. You can see it's about halfway. That's how I know it's time to flip. And over we go. Look how beautiful those look, huh? Amazing. So we're going to let this cook for a little bit longer. <coughs> that black pepper is hitting hard. Um, and we're going to get ready to make a pan sauce. So we were really excited about this recipe because for a steak au poivre, which is like totally a recipe you'd see in like a bistro or something like that in France, they take the drippings of the steak and they make the sauce. Well, we're going to take the drippings of the swordfish and make a really great sauce just the same way. We start with a little bit of a shallot. You can totally just use onion or a little garlic. But I take the shallot. I kind of slice it horizontally like this, not all the way through, just kind of leaving the back together, and then down into little strips. And the goal with the shallot is to cut it as small as you can. I always say this, but if you're not good with the knife, just throw this in the food processor, whiz it up, whiz it up. And then I'm going to take my knife and just literally, I want this tiny, tiny, tiny pieces. Oh, that swordfish is, it's telling me it's done. I'm going to check it out real quick. I have a little platter. This is not the platter I'm serving it on. It's a little blue platter. I'm going to take these small guys off first. And I'm just going to let it rest. All right. Just like any type of protein, you want it to kind of rest, let, let that kind of muscle of the fish chill out. This one, whenever you feel it, you can see me poking it, it's going to feel firm. Swordfish is not like flaky the way salmon is or cod where it's going to flake apart. Swordfish is meaty and firm. So you want that kind of spring back, that bounce. This looks awesome. Take that guy off and take this guy off too. And this is what they look like just resting. Really, really simple. Try not to have them touch so they don't steam each other anymore, but they look great. Okay, look what's left in the pan. Look at this. Look at all that drippings, that dark, beautiful crust on the bottom of the pan called, anyone know? Throw it in the chat. What are people saying, Kat? Fond. Fond, baby, F-O-N-D, fond. Like, I am fond of you. I am fond of this. So good. So I'm going to add these really finely chopped shallots, just like this, with a little bit of butter to the pan. I mean, this is a French dish. All right, we got to do a little butter, right? So here we go. In with like a tablespoon of butter. And in with the shallots. And just start with like a spoon, just letting those shallots kind of just move in the pan and just start to kind of caramelize. Then, right when they start to kind of brown, which is going to happen pretty fast, we're going to add some green peppercorns. So I'm going to add these and talk about them. I'm going to add most of them, but I'm going to show you some. So green peppercorns are pickled peppercorns. So you don't grind these. You actually eat them whole. Check this out. Just pop them in your mouth. They're so bright and briny. They're kind of like a pickle. Slightly spicy, more fruity. You can find green peppercorns anywhere nowadays. Almost every spice aisle I've ever seen has them. They're really popular. Really good in salads. But this sauce is what they're known for. This kind of like peppercorn apoive situation. So we're kind of mirroring 
what's happening on the swordfish in the pan. This looks so good. All right, so we let that cook. Then, next up, again, we're in France. We got to do it. Oh, do you have a question? Yes, there are some folks wondering if you can use capers. Ooh, um, first of all, totally. It's not gonna have the same flavor. They look the same, but it's not gonna have the same flavor. But capers would be great in this, absolutely. Just be different. Yeah, it's hard to think of what I would replace black peppercorns with. I'd probably just go with extra black pepper and maybe a splash of, we're gonna add it anyways, but acid, so we're gonna use lemon. But right now, see how dark this I'm letting this get? Now I'm going to add a little bit of wine. And that's just going to deglaze the pan. Look at that. And I'm just going to scrape the pan with my spoon. Look at that sauce starting to come together. Oh, it smells amazing. And I'm just using the back of the spoon and just scraping all the good crust that the swordfish left. That looks incredible. How good does that look? So we let that cook for about 30 seconds, maybe a minute tops. We just want to cook out a little bit of that alcohol, and then we're going to go in with a good amount of heavy cream. Now we're really going to France. Once you add the cream, it's like, okay, we have entered Paris. Um, cream in. We're going to let this start to kind of come up to a boil. But before we do, I want to add even more black pepper. So a nice big pinch or a couple cranks would be great. Nice big pinch of salt too. And you just start to kind of mix this together. And what it should start to look is like this cafe au lait color. Not white. It should be like a, yeah, like a caramel, like a light coffee almost is the color of this sauce. Look at that. Unbelievable. That looks so good. All right, so two more ingredients that really set this sauce off, okay? One, we want parsley. This one, we do not want to over chop because we do want the flavor. So I just chop it once or twice through. I'm gonna use a little bit of the stem because I love the stem. Just like that. That looks awesome. Now I'll give it one more chop through. So it breaks down a little bit. But, you know, the more you chop this, the more you just lose the flavor. So I'm going to use half right now in the sauce and half for garnish. Look how beautiful that looks. All right, so the sauce is just kind of cooking down, cooking down, getting thicker, thicker, more concentrated. And then, I mean... I just have to call it out. We've got a little butter. All right. Again, if we're going to make this, let's make it the way that you would make steak frites. We're already saving so many calories. I mean, think of all the health benefits of seafood, right? So it's like you can lean in a little bit more. It's amazing. Now, if swordfish is just not your thing, you can do this exact same recipe with salmon, halibut, um, scallops and the reality is is that Fulton right Fulton seafood market has the largest variety of any seafood or specialty items in America so like whatever suits your fancy and you can uh, what I find when I'm grocery shopping on there is you discover stuff that you've like never really heard of like hake um, I don't know stuff that you wouldn't get on your coast um, like for us that's bluefish and you just kind of try new things, which is really, really nice. When I was on the East Coast, I really missed Dungeness crabs. And they would get them in. Oh, they would save my butt. Because I love, love Dungeness crabs. All right, let me just give us a quick taste. To die for. Two things it needs. Touch of salt. I'm a chef. Play cool. And a little bit of lemon. Now We've I got add a the lemon. Was question that? from Lena real quick. Oh yeah, hey Lena. Hi, how much would I, I didn't buy parsley because it wasn't in yeah. the recipe. What do I do? 
Oh, don't worry about it. Do you have Do you have anything fresh? Do you have celery? Uh, I can find celery. Yeah, okay. if you have celery leaves, that could be kind of a replacement. Or if you have anything like thyme or basil, any soft herbs you can replace with this. Mint. Or How much do I don't worry about it. How much do I need of the herb? Like a couple tablespoons. I'd say a handful that you can chop up. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Lena. Mm. That's getting really good. All right. At this point, I'm going to turn it off. How do you know it's ready to turn off? Check this out. You dip your spoon in, drag it through, and if it coats the back of your spoon and you can draw a line through it, that means you did it right. It is nice and reduced. That's called nappe, or to coat. So I turn it off and then I add my lemon. And we do that so the lemon doesn't curdle the cream. Just adds a little brightness at the end. Look at this. Unbelievably good. All right, I'm going to try it one more time. Make sure I'm happy with it. Mm. Wow. Wow. That is so good. Mmm. Wow. Okay. Let's quickly talk about the swordfish. And then I want to play it up. So I grab one of these puppies. And I'm just going to put it on my plate. And I just want to cut into it so you guys can really see what perfectly cooked looks like when it comes to swordfish. Go to a side view here. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. So I'll just cut in the middle here. First, I want you to see how... You can't just like chop through it. I like to stride my knife through it because it's, it's really firmer. That, it almost looks like chicken. See how it's completely opaque, almost like a pearl. That is perfectly cooked, okay? You can have a little bit be um, more rare. I mean, this is totally safe to eat raw, especially when you're getting it from Fulton but I want to keep it nice and juicy. Swordfish, like so many other fish, if you overcook them, they'll dry out. That's just the way it's going to be. So what I'm going to do, the way I'm going to plate this up, first thing is I'm going to grab all the resting juices of our swordfish. We show this real quick, Luke. Thank you, my, my man. And I'm going to add those into the sauce, just like you would a steak. I love this recipe so much because I love the idea of replacing what's normally a steak with a fish. Lightens it, brightens it, makes it healthy. Beautiful. I'm going to take two pieces of fish. Actually, I'm going all three. Let's go all three. Let's kind of fan these up. Oh, that looks amazing. And then just a giant pile of these fries, like an aggressive pile, just coming at everyone. I love that. I love just a mountain of food. We always, all diners, and we're taught as chefs to make the food really nice and high so it kind of comes at the diner. Beautiful. I might slice up a little limon or two, so people have some options. And just kind of tuck those nearby. That's probably too many. A couple of those, beautiful. And then I go in with that sauce. And I just start spooning. And you know, the swordfish is so good. So you can serve this on the side, because the swordfish would be good just as is. But this sauce, man, it really sets it off. You can dip the fries through this. My wife would love that. In fact, I'm so making this for my wife. This is so her jam. That looks awesome. I might take a little extra parsley that we left before over the entire dish. If you look at it right now, if we go from top down, 
you know, it looks great. But by adding a little bit of fresh greenery, it just kind of brightens the whole thing. And I'm going to hold that up. Ladies and gents, shoestring fries with a swordfish apoive, peppercorn swordfish, done in, let's look at the time, 40 minutes, front to back, insanity. All right, I'm gonna squeeze a little lemon. I like extra lemon, but that's why I put it on the side. Your option, your choice. And then with swordfish, you know, with so much fish, you don't need to serve it with a knife. But with swordfish, I like to. I mean, you don't have to, but again, it's that texture that we all love about swordfish, that meaty chew. So a little knife here, a little bit of this sauce. I haven't had something that good in a long time. Wow. Wow. Guys, it's not overly spicy. It's really subtle. The peppercorns are sweet, but the fish holds up. Mmm. Mmm. So much fish. We get lost in a sauce this rich. We just get lost. That's just the reality. But this holds up because it's so beefy. It's so incredibly, like, this is what's so special about swordfish. It just can stand up on its own. I'm going to try the frites just to counterbalance. Heaven. Bliss. It's like the lightest little Paris Bistro dish you've had. It is screaming summer. You have to make this. If you're just watching today, that is totally cool. If you are making it, you are genius. Is that Lena who made it? Who made it in the top? Yes. Lena. Wow. Go get it, girl. I love it. Guys, this is one of my favorite dishes I think we've made this year. This is, and I don't say that often. I love all of our classes, but this is dangerous. Oh my gosh. Mm. All right. Oh my gosh. I'm going to let that sit in. A couple of announcements. I'm going to call it out once again. You guys, I don't care if you don't know how to cook a piece of fish. I don't care if you're new to this world. You need to get behind Fulton Seafood. There is a reason. There's a lot of people we could have gone to to partner with. They have the top quality. If you want the sweetest, freshest, mild, creamiest, butteriest, ch beautiful fish on the market, it's Fulton Seafood. Again, overnight, anywhere domestically, with the exception of Hawaii and Alaska. Now, I know, again, a lot of people are already customers. I hear you. But you get those thousands of points, 2,000 points off your second order. Or not off, but towards your second loyalty. So their loyalty program is amazing. The more you buy, the more you're going to get in return. And if you have never tried them, you need to put a reminder on your phone. Or like I said, draw it with a Sharpie. I don't care what. This Saturday, you're getting an email from them. It expires within 24 hours, really. And you have to redeem it. $50 off your first order. Tell your friends. I don't care. Everyone needs to know about this. This is ridiculous. That would pay for this whole thing. Insanity. Insanity. I'm going to devour this. A couple of little housekeeping rules. Uh, first and foremost, next class, we've got a tahini saute. It's going to be really interesting with a papaya salad. Really different. It's kind of like, um, kind of like a little taste of Thai. So that's coming up next week. Um, other than that, we love you guys. Chef, can we look at... There's another plate of swordfish here. Who, who, who? From Despinaz, if I said that correctly. I love it. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Nice job. You guys, amazing. By the way, can you throw in the chat real quick? Who here 
is a Fulton user and member because we've done, I think this is our fourth class with them and we've gotten so much good feedback from you guys. Who here has tried them out? We've got a bunch of people coming in yeah. saying they love Fulton. Okay, this is, uh, listen, we love you guys. We do not pay you guys to say this stuff. Listen to the people. It is the best. Finding great seafood is hard to come by. So check it out. We'll put in the link. Fulton Seafood Market, 200 plus years in existence. Go find that. You can't. It's the best. Speaking of the best, I don't know, guys. Could be my favorite of 2023 so far. This is definitely a highlight. Enjoy. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week, Tuesday. We'll be back in the kitchen. Take care, everybody. Good to see you.